Hey there my little muffins! I know that this is like the official everybody draw Muhammad day but I'm not gonna draw Muhammad in this video. I'm not gonna do that because I am Muhammad. I know you may be a little confused now and ask well why do I look like a woman? The honest answer is because I can. Look, bare arms. Haram, haram! No my little minions, haram or sin is just a man-made concept. Let me explain it easy. You see, a long, long time ago, everything was compacted into this very little tiny spar, okay? Which was really, really hot, so it kind of banged, and then expanded, and as it was expanding, it started cooling, so energy turned into matter. Atoms interacted, chemical reactions created amino acids, which led to the forming of life that started to evolve. From simple cells, to complex cells, to multicellular, to arthropods, to fish, to amphibians, to reptiles, to mammals, to us, right? And then as our brains were getting more and more complex and implicitly our thinking process, we started to contemplate on life and death, so we came up with this idea of life after death which led to spirituality, which led to religion, which led to people believing that all this is the work of a supernatural creator who is now very concerned with our clothing choices. Yeah. This is just the short version. For a more elaborated explanation, you can watch a couple of videos on Big Bang and Evolution, which you'll find linked down there. By the way, when I say down there, I actually mean the underbar and not the... you know... no. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking what Muhammad, what you're saying now is very different from what you were saying when you were alive. True, but you see, I had about 14 centuries to think about stuff and I came up with the conclusion that I kind of got carried away back then. You know, all those people following me and thinking that I'm the messenger of God and all that, it kind of got to my head and I made a lot of choices I'm not proud of today. But I cannot change the past. The only thing I can do is try to improve the present. So I'm going to give a few pointers that I really hope Muslims around the world will take in consideration. I'm really getting soft, aren't I? Let me rephrase that. To Muslims everywhere, these are your new laws, and I commend you to obey them. If someone somewhere says or does something you disagree with, making death threats is not a viable option for you to argue their points. You see, making death threats, or in the worst case going through them, is not really the best method to defend what you call a religion of peace. Think about it. All women deserve the same respect that men do, regardless if they choose to wrap themselves in garbage bags or not. Um, burkas. Yeah, burkas. Now, I know this may come as a bit of a shock to you, but as a universal rule that applies to any circumstances you may think of, women are not a property of men and should not be considered as such. Ever. Beheading, stoning, hanging, cutting of limbs, flogging and any other such types of physical punishments are from now on strictly prohibited. Consensual sex between adults is not a crime and there should be no legal penalties for it. Regardless if it happens outside of marriage or between people of the same gender or whatever other sexual acts you might not like and therefore wish to punish. The same goes for apostasy, blasphemy and whatever else involves people's freedom of speech that again you might not like and therefore wish to punish. I said before that in my lifetime I made some messed up mistakes and that includes <clears throat> having a six-year-old wife, but I'm not done with that anymore, okay? So keep in mind that if the woman still wants dolls for her birthday, that should be a clear indication that she's too freaking young to marry. If there are things I forgot to mention, please keep in mind that being dead for centuries can seriously affect your memory. So if you have any other suggestions for laws I should implement in the new Sharia, don't be shy to leave a comment down there. Oh, down there, I mean... Now, about this everybody draw Muhammad day thing and you, my little minions, as well as some non-Muslims saying that it is bigotry, I'm here to say it is not. If a group of Christians managed to censor Jesus out of a cartoon and everybody would be drawing Jesus now, I don't think people would be calling that bigotry. This protest is not against what people are, but it's against what people did. And that is making death threats against the producer of a cartoon who depicted Mohammed, uh, that's me by the way, in a bear costume. The message behind this protest is not one of hate for you as people, but it is to show that because you abusively got an image banned, that image will be now all over the place. Kinda like when you flag videos, you know? You get one video flagged down and that video will be uploaded on hundreds of other channels as a protest. My point is that you cannot call this Islamophobia. A phobia is described as an irrational fear, and there are reasons behind what those protesters are fearing. You see, they value their rights to freedom of speech and expression, and considering the recent events, they have reasons to fear that those rights are fading away. As for people depicting my image, I really have no problem with that, so neither should you. Now think about it logically. The reason why there are hadith prohibiting you from creating visual images of me 
is, and it is explained, the concern that this would make people idolize the image and forget about the message behind it. Now, I have a question for you. Are you really concerned with people starting to idolize a bear?